Hello, wonderful, beautiful people. We are covering Incredibles 2 today. Now, what I love about this film is that even though they took forever to release the second one, they did a great job starting off right where The Incredibles ended. Like, it was back-to-back, -back, like overlap, perfection. Um, now, some, vi some movies will like take years and years in it to um to make and don't really do a good job explaining that time in between they'll just kind of glance over the amount of years that it took but this one really kicked off of course pixar does a great job so salutes to that right but there was a lot of information in this film that really was important to the pixar theory and to the superpowers the the incredibles the people with superpowers. So we are going to be covering all of that right now, looking at the Easter eggs, and I will see you shortly at the very end. Okay, so Incredibles 2, if you notice, the intro actually changed. We're going back, we're starting off with, um, oh God, what's his name? This is so much off of Men in Black. By the way, the same actor plays um, one of the characters, and this is such a scene from it. If you haven't seen it, I'm not going to give that too much away of what happened in Men in Black. It is an older franchise, so go ahead and check it out. But we're starting off with, well, Tony asks Violet on a date. This comes into play later. And then, well, the Mole Man comes into play. Um, and Tony notices the Supers, the Incredibles. And guess who has a hissy fit? Yeah, Violet, she throws her thing down, and that is why he got his brain blasted, his memory, it's gone, um, from her, and that kind of sucks, but anyway, we are now in Incredibles 2, and while it did take a long time for this one to come out, it does kick off right where the other one ended, so important to note, supers are still illegal during this time, and they, of course, get in trouble for trying to save the city. Now, they are out in this motel. Um, if you know during the scene that the, um, the Chinese box is the same one that pops up in several Pixar movies like Inside Out, for example, Ratatouille, um, and so many more. Also, I want to make note of this tower was based off the Stark Tower. Incredibles, you know, the phone lines, all of that. Very much giving stark energy and if you guys don't know well incredibles incredibles 2 and some other pixar movies are very much linked to marvel so well they're out of a home they go live in this rich guy's house for a little while while um mrs incredible helen parr decides to um, rebrand with the help. Now, there are several Easter eggs and hidden Mickeys throughout this, like Fiber O's, the grapes form hidden Mickeys, if you saw that a few minutes before. We have Dumbo up on the wall, and we have a Dr. Seuss book, so that is fun. Um, I also want to make note, the, the painting behind Helen in this shot uh, very much represents her and the family. She is the one that is separated from everyone. Guys, I'm popping in for a moment before we continue on with the Easter eggs. Um, there were some that I was kind of glancing over, but I wanted to deeper dive into them, such as the different supers. This does come into play throughout Incredibles 1 and throughout Incredibles 2, which is what we're talking about. Um, so some of these supers were previously mentioned. Some had died for various reasons. Some had died because of their capes. Some had died because of um, syndrome, so forth. Um, and also a lot of these supers were also at their wedding in the beginning of Incredibles. Okay. Anyway, moving on, we do some of the, uh, we do see some of these guys return, you know, they were talking about statues. They were talking about making this initiative, con you know, happen again. Um, and so, Let's continue on, but just remember that these supers do pop up again throughout the movie. Anyway, continuing on, we have Incredible Mobile. It has been sold. It is very much like the Batman Mobile, 
Um, and this does come into play later. We also see Mrs. Incredible, aka Elastigirl, has now been on TV and is making do. Um, we also have this little snippet of, you know, Edna. Edna's taking control. Edna babysits. Um, there was a short off this. I will do this in probably June or July. Um, but yeah, this is fun. She also discovers more of his powers and how to control them. That plays really important into later in the movie. But will there be an Incredibles 3 based off Jack Jack? Who knows? So they end up having to go on this yacht because that is where every super is being captive um, and, you know, trying to change the scene because of um, Evelyn, Evelyn. Um, and she had created these like glasses to turn the minds of the supers. The supers go after the incredible children who then go after their parents to save the day and. Um, and, well, you know, with the help of Jack-Jack, they fix it all. Don't worry, everything ends up being saved the day, and they do make changes in the world. Hey guys, before I do the outro, I also want to make note that during this film, there were some quite bold things that Disney had, or Disney slash Pixar had done that I want to make mention of. So the first thing being that if you have not seen this movie already, there is a warning for epilepsy. Um, there are big trigger warnings. Um, so I did not put that on the scene or put that in my video. I didn't show any of those clips. So making sure you guys know that. But if you have issues with those types of things, where it's strobe lights or, you know, circles, meditation, you know, hypnosis, all that, do not watch this movie. My second note before we get into our outro is that there were some bold statements, especially by Violet, um, where they really take note that just because the law is, you know, the law doesn't mean it's right, right? And they had made people who are born with special powers illegal. Now, you can translate this the way you want, but there was a lot of political lining with this and... As I said, that's quite bold for, especially for Disney, but Disney has been getting bolder with their, their movies lately, and I'm here for it. I think there's a lot of amazing lessons to learn, um, so I would love to hear your thoughts if you caught those, um, and, and how you feel about that, but I think, you know, Disney movies, Pixar movies can be a great learning basis. Obviously, not everything is, you know, correct, and if you guys follow me in homeschooling, you'll understand why I say certain things um, in terms of learning. You can turn everything and almost everything into a learning opportunity for kids um, and make it fun. But anyway, let's get to the outro and I will see you guys soon. All right. Well, as usual, I want to know your thoughts and opinions, not only on the movie itself, but if you knew about any of those Easter eggs, those references, because there was a lot. There was a lot, a lot. Um, but isn't that the fun part? Like, you get to understand the movie a little bit better. Maybe you didn't realize things. I know not everyone's into the Easter eggs and the theories, and that's perfectly okay. My channel's not for you if that's the case. Um, but for those that are, or those that are into animation history and those, like I said, those theories, this is a way that animators put more of themselves into the movies. And that's something that I personally enjoy as a Disney film historian and theorist because I can appreciate that. You're going to put a little bit of yourself into your work. And it's memorialized through a video, right? Like never forgotten, should say never forgotten, but nowadays never really forgotten even if it's a lost video there is information out there that you can find you know it may say lost it's we're finding more and more so it's pretty cool anyway i hope you enjoyed this video um and i will see you very shortly i hope you like and subscribe and i'll see you next time